In this episode of How RV Stuff Works, we're going to look at satellite antennas. This is the inside of a King Tailgater antenna. If we measure the antenna reflector, it is 13 inches in diameter, and that is considerably smaller than the one you might have at home. As well, your home antenna is more elliptical on the horizontal plane than round. Both of these factors are the reasons why these portable antennas can only receive one satellite signal at a time, as signals from the other satellites are off-axis. And this is known as a parabolic reflector, or a parabola. Microwave energy at the frequencies these systems operate at is very directional. The signal actually hits the reflector, bounces back, and is collected by the feed horn in the center. This is kind of like a flashlight reflector in reverse. And if we turn the antenna around so that you can see the back side, you can see a metal coating on the back side of the parabola, which is actually what reflects the signal, because plastic is basically transparent to RF energy. This is a single channel antenna, and we can see here that there is only one low noise signal amplifier. Two channel antennas would have a second amplifier located here. However, this requires a second Wally or equivalent receiver, and since the antenna can only connect to one satellite at a time, the usefulness of a two-channel antenna is questionable in my view. This is a motor that controls the antenna's elevation, and it turns this gear set. And a second motor controls the antenna's azimuth with another gear set. Azimuth meaning direction or compass heading. So the antenna is capable of moving in both azimuth and elevation as it searches for the signal in the sky. And while I couldn't get my camera into the area to show it, there is also a potentiometer connected to the gear set, which I'm assuming provides feedback to the receiver for determining the antenna position. Finally, there is a circuit board that provides a low frequency link to the receiver typically referred to as out-of-band signaling. Undoubtedly, it is a digital link, and this is the mechanism whereby the receiver controls the antenna. This board uses the same coax as a received broadcast signal, so there are actually two signals on the coax simultaneously. As well, DC power for operating the antenna comes from the receiver using the same coax. So, the coax performs three simultaneous functions. Pretty neat, eh? So the first step we have to do, plug this in and turn the receiver on. And then with the Wally at least on the dish network, the receiver will prompt you to do a scan. The antenna will now scan the entire sky in all directions looking for satellites. And it's looking like it's finding the satellites. And depending on how clear of a signal the receiver gets from the satellites, this process could take from 30 seconds to 5 minutes or more even. The longer it takes, the more marginal a signal I have found. And of course, if you're successful in scanning the sky and receiving satellites, then you can start watching TV. As you probably know, not all channels are on the same satellite. For DISH, they are typically on one of three satellites. Therefore, when you change channels, sometimes there is a slight delay if the antenna has to capture a new satellite. It's unfortunate that you cannot see what the antenna is doing during setup and operation. If that was possible, you could watch the behavior of the antenna and determine where it is pointing and if you should move to a better location. King does make a translucent dome version, and I would recommend that model if you are in the market for a satellite receiver. In fact, I think I will contact King and see if I can buy just a new dome as a spare part. I hope this video was informative and perhaps gives you a better understanding on how the antenna works for your satellite system. Thanks for watching.